Kia ora, namaste, assalamualaikum, sastriakal, kemcho, barakam, ayam bowan, nisa bula binaka. Welcome to Cop Chat. I'm Jessica Puang, the Ethnic Responsiveness Manager for Tamaki Makoro of the New Zealand Police. I wish to thank Apna TV for allowing us to use this platform to reach out to the communities. Today, I have the privilege of inviting Detective Inspector Brett Betty, the Director of Fangaya Ngapa Harakeke. Welcome, Detective Inspector Brett Betty, uh, to Copjet. So, you are the Director of the Fangaya Ngapa Harakeke. Can you tell us a bit about your role? Hmm. Well, Fangaya Ngapa Harakeke is one of two um, pilot programs running nationally currently looking at how police, along with their partners, um, can provide a high level of service to those negatively affected by family harm. Uh, so we're talking about victims of family harm, tamariki and whanau, the families that are affected by family harm, but also the perpetrators um, that uh, offend against others. All right, so, um, so your role as the director can you tell us, share with us, you know, in your day-to-day -day work, uh, what would you be doing? I lead a team of approximately 35 um, staff in the Waitamata district, okay. and of the Waitamata district covering Rodney, North Shore and Waitakere. Um, the staff that I lead are a combination of sworn staff, they're police officers in uniform, as you, uh, like you would expect to see on the street. We have a number of non-sworn administrators that are, assist us with the, um, the backroom work that needs, be, needs to be done. And I also have five kai fina, um, who are trained social workers, who are also woven into our team so that we can actually provide, alongside of our partners, both ministry, agency and uh, non-government agency partners, a comprehensive, holistic response to the victims of family harm, to their wider family, and also the perpetrators. So when you say holistic way to help family harm, uh, before I go into that, can you share with us exactly what constitutes family harm? Well, a lot of your, your viewers will consider family harm to be um, the striking or the assault um, of... Physically. Um, physical assault of one person by another. Mm -hmm. But um, our, our legislation has expanded significantly over a period of time um, to respond to the fact that, um, that family harm comes in many different shapes and sizes. It, it can include... Um, not only physical harm, but um, mental harm as well. Um, and so the reality is that we need to provide a high level of service across um, a wide spectrum of what family harm can entail. It so, can be the striking of a person, it can okay. be the psychological abuse of a person, which includes no physical assault whatsoever. Can you give us an example? Well, psychological um, abuse could be um, a family, a, a one family member's um, abusive um, actions towards another in regards to with, withholding of um, finances, um, okay. of um, uh, being unusually um, um, cruel or obstructive in the way that they live their lives. So, uh, you see, in our culture, maybe it's not just our culture, maybe it's every family, uh, and I'll take the example of a husband and wife. So say, for example, if someone comes home, shout at each other, uh, complain a lot about uh, the person, is that psychological or mental as you put it? Um, we have to take um, every circumstance as we find it. When police um, intervene or are called to intervene in a family harm episode, um, those, those episodes by their nature are, are always extremely complex. There is always two sides to the story and there is almost always a significant history mm -hmm. to what has brought those two people to the point where the police have had to intervene. Um, in, in an example where two people have had harsh words against each other, um, there, may not, there may be no actual criminal offence, but the police still have an opportunity mm. to engage with both of those people and seek a pathway for both those people that's going to stop that um, escalation of a verbal argument mm -hmm. to a physical altercation, which is ultimately what we want to avoid. Okay, that, that's good advice, um, so that people know. I mean, this program is being watched by lots of communities, and uh, they will now know 
uh, when and when not to call the police, right? Uh, and I'm sure you would like them to let the police know. If, if they feel that they're, they're possibly in danger or uh, undergoing a lot of stress continuously, repeatedly? Absolutely. And, and ultimately, the purpose of the police in New Zealand, whether they are family harm specialists or not, is to keep our community safe. Sure. Ensure that our community is safe mm -hmm. and feels safe. We would encourage, uh, in, in a family harm context, any person to call us sooner rather than later. Statistically, we understand that police often don't engage with either a family harm perpetrator or a family harm victim till the seventh incident has mm. occurred. Um, and that takes me back to the discussion I had earlier with you around that often family harm has a long and complex history before the police get involved. So we don't want to be called at the seventh time. We want, we want the community to be reassured they can call us the first time. We will engage with them, we'll, we'll uh, review the environment they find themselves in, and police along with our partners, both non-government agency partners, ministry partners and agency partners, can then provide a holistic response to what we see in front of us. Okay, that's good to know that uh, averagely seventh time might, yeah. It's, so a, it's a terrible statistic yes. and it does indicate that family harm is, is um, significantly underreported. So we've learnt about um, physical, psychological or mental, what's what anymore? Is there another part that we can well, call family harm? Family harm, once again, comes in, in a variety of, um, 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 of guises. Um, and ultimately, we would prefer not to be tied down with, this, with the specifics when we're talking to members of our community, particularly our ethnic community. Mm -hmm. The message to everybody in our community is, if you feel unsafe, Call the police. Okay. It's our job to um, to get to you, to provide that safety to you. And in the case of a family harm episode where the police are called, if it's required, the police will put together a 72-hour safety plan for the um, the victims of that family harm and their wider family, if required. So when you say 72 hours, is that the same with the? The, well, in working in the police, there's a lot of police jargon like PSO, which mm. is the Police Safety Order. Yes. Is that tie in with that? Absolutely. So how does it work, that PSO? Absolutely. So the, the, the Police Safety Order, or PSO in police talk, um, is a tool which our frontline officers use to keep um, the victims or the potential victims of family harm safe. As, I, as we said earlier, family harm is, in, is incredibly complex. Um, and ultimately, no matter how highly trained or how highly motivated our frontline officers are, often they will encounter an episode between, pe between people that is incredibly difficult to unpick right there. Um, a PSO is one of several tools that the police have to wrap a safety plan around a potential victim mm -hmm. and that victim's family if police believe that a family harm incident has occurred but at the actual time of, of attending that incident, sufficient evidence does not exist mm. to make an arrest of a family harm perpetrator or an offender. If the police have, a, if the police have um, done a high level investigation at the scene, um, they have uh, contacted all the people involved, but they still feel that they've not reached the evidential threshold okay. to make an arrest, they can still, if they believe something has occurred and if they believe that the victim in this matter or the wider family is still in danger, mm. can issue a police safety order to the person they believe is the aggressor, and that police and that police safety order will bind that aggressor or perpetrator um, legally to be removed from the location, be it uh, in normal circumstances the family home or a house, and to stay away from that location and the and the victim and the family for a set period of time. Okay, that's good. But so. How bad has um, family harm affected ethnic people specifically? Is there any anything you could share with us? Yeah. Well, we we currently um, collect stats and data, okay. which does indicate um, that a number of ethnicities uh, within the Waitematā district are negatively affected by family harm. Um, the reality is, though, is that family harm crosses all manner of boundaries, whether it be gender, whether it be ethnic, whether it be religious, 
whether it be socioeconomic. So our intent is not to provide a particular service to one particular ethnicity, it is to provide the best service we can to our entire community. Mm -hmm. What we are doing now by diversifying our greater police workforce but also specifically our family harm delivery service is bringing um, staff who have incredibly high skills that link directly to ethnic communities into our workforce so that when we are dealing with a Chinese family um, or a Somali family mm -hmm. or, um, um, or a, a, a Samoan family or a Maori family, we, have, we, d we can deliver our services to them with an element of cultural competence. But have you actually seen uh, more ethnic people coming to report nowadays? Yes. The, okay. the number That's of, a good thing? It is a good thing. As I said earlier, we encourage everyone in our community to report family harm at, at an early point. Um, we understand that family harm happens on a continuum. Yeah. Um, it is not an isolated event. Things will have occurred before the first family harm report to police. Yeah. And our role is to provide whatever services we can to ensure that that incident is, if it's not the last incident, that we start to reduce the harm that comes with family harm episodes. So not only do we want to um, reduce family harm overall, but we want to reduce the, ha the, the, the harm mm. and the injury mm. that comes with it. Okay. So, I mean, the fact is, in our culture, it's, uh, sure, it's, uh, face factor is very important for us ethnic people. Uh, but it's not just about losing face that I, I am reporting that, say, for example, uh, my family has got a family harm issue. Uh, it's not just about losing the face, but I think one of the, the, the main, very important reason behind it is also, there is no way I can put my family member before the courts or even behind the bars, you know, uh, behind bars. And, and what's your thought on that? And, and we're trying to find how could we help these people understand um, and how how can we deal with this? Yeah. So previously in, in years gone by, I would agree that the, the police's ability to deal with um, everybody affected by family harm, whether it be the immediate victim, their family, the wider community or the perpetrator, um, our services were limited and police accepted that. Um, and so we now collaborate and partner with a number of other service providers, both agency, ministry and also uh, non-government providers to deliver services to all the people that are negatively affected. So police's job is to intervene in a crisis situation. So in a family harm episode, police will get to that location, they will separate the parties, they will make sure everybody's safe, particularly and specifically the victim and the tamariki or the children. They will then uh, deliver the services that are required at the scene. Um, and if there is a decision to, to uh, and the evidence exi exists, to arrest and then charge the offender, we now have the ability to, to put services and support alongside the offender as well. So we're not only now dealing with just crisis intervention, we're looking at support for everybody including the offender. So maybe that is a, um, something for the wider community to, con to consider, is that if the police do have to, have to intervene, and whether or not an arrest has to be made. We now have the ability to, do, to provide support services to, a, to an offender to, um, to give them the tools and the opportunity to change their ways, mm. to stop harming the people that they love, um, to, to stop um, being a, a family harm perpetrator. So, okay, for the sake of our uh, audience here, who are mainly South Asian, from the South Asian community. Can you share with us what are some of the services out there that say, for example, if they know um, they are the affected family, where can they go or, or seek some help? Yeah. So um, we, uh, particularly in Waitakere, but across Waitamata, we have a myriad of um, extremely professional government and non-government agencies who um, have uh, and do collaborate with police mm -hmm. um, to provide uh, services at a number of levels. Um, Waitakere 
is particularly strong in that area. The network is, is uh, a particularly strong network which has existed for almost uh, three decades in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, got, police have uh, engaged and partnered with providers um, such as um, the Fono, um, who um, specialise in uh, um, um, helping Pacifica families. Waikareira Trust, um, Tu Wahini, who are Kopapa Māori Services, Family Action, um, and Shine, uh, who are, who are ser that deliver services to, to all the community. Um, we also have a number of other um, specific um, Asian support um, uh, community providers who, once again, if we are able to, if we understand mm -hmm. the, the ethnicity and if, uh, we can then deliver um, tailored services to those particular people. Sure. And I know that um, organisations such as Gandini Bus, uh, especially for the uh, person who is to do the Family Harm Act, I think can actually self-refer themselves to Gandhi Nivas, as these are for the males, yes. right? Yeah. And they could stay there and get some help, get some counselling. And then for the others, there is uh, Sahata, and there is uh, Rupa or uh, Ok, and also there is um, Shanti Nivas, uh, who could help as well for, for them. Uh, to, to get help and these support groups are really really uh, good and uh, they're free of charge too. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly right. So inspector, detective inspector, um, is there anything that the community can do with the police, work with the police to reduce family harm? Absolutely. Um, I go back to my earlier um, statement around reporting family harm early. Um, Family harm is significantly underreported in our community. Mm -hmm. um, police and our partners are making great steps in um, establishing a high level of trust and confidence with those people within the community that are suffering family harm. But it is, it's a long road. Um, and so my, my request um, to everybody that's watching today would be, if you are suffering family harm, contact the police. If you know someone who is, contact the police. If you are the neighbour of an individual that you, that you know is suffering family harm, contact the police. Mm -hmm. If you are a perpetrator or an offender, someone who has um, been involved in family harm assaults on your loved ones, come and contact the police. We have the ability to put, service, uh, to put support services alongside all of you to not only reduce the incidence of family harm, but um, also the consequences. So, um, you just mentioned neighbours or you know someone who is doing family harm but not your family to contact the police. Will their names be kept confidential? Yes. If, if um, in the circumstance of a neighbour or a third party that contacts the police to, um, to inform us of their concerns about someone who's the victim of family harm, mm -hmm. if they make a specific request, that their details be kept private, then that will occur. Um, as by example, if you are uh, driving down the road in your car and you see um, two individuals, you know, a male and a female, for argument's sake, having what you believe what appears to be a family harm episode, um, you can report that incident to police. Um, you don't have to give your details; the police will attend that location. Mm -hmm. If you are the neighbour of an individual and you would prefer that your neighbours don't know that it's you who called. We will, we will take that into account as long as you specify that you want your information to be kept private. Okay, that's really good. So, um, one last thing, Detective Inspector. I mean, uh, in the last six months, I've been in the Henderson Police Station, and I have the opportunity to work with you in, uh, and have many meetings. Uh, and you're always smiling. <laughs> you're always smiling, and you're always so... So, so polite, and uh, you're one person that if, it's, if you're in, in a crowd, if I was in a crowd, you're that person I would actually walk to and, and have a chat with you very naturally, you know? Can you tell us how do you keep yourself so, so bubbly and, and happy all the time? Oh, well, I'm very humbled you would say that. Thank you. I'm, I'm a little bit, am I going red? I feel like I'm blushing a little bit there. Um, look, thank you for those kind words, Jessica. I guess the answer for me is really simple. Um, 
I work for a fantastic op, um, organisation. Um, I've been a police officer for 28 years. I've seen a massive amount of change in my organisation in that time, but we continue to strive to improve. Every day, the police in New Zealand are looking to do their job better uh, and more effectively and keep more people safe than they did the day before. Um, and, and that's really exciting for me, uh, as just as a police officer. In the family harm environment, um, uh, it is a massive challenge. Our, our frontline officers um, are attending, 20, just to give some stats, 20% um, of the calls that our frontline officers attend are family harm related. Mm. It's a massive piece of our work. 40% of their day-to-day -day work over an eight-hour shift is administering family harm events. Wow. So it is a significant piece of, uh, of work that we do, and they do it so well. But it is also a massive risk operationally for our, t for our staff. They're well trained and they do the best they can under extremely trying circumstances. So for me as a senior police leader to be able to bring more tools to our frontline staff, um, to deliver more opportunities for my family harm team to engage with, with, with victims and their family and also perpetrators to, to break the cycle of family harm, which is often inter intergenerational, mm. is extremely um, satisfying for me. And also, um, having been in the police for such a long time and having seen in the past um, opportunities where police and others could have shared information but didn't, um, and now to be able to work in, in a collaborative environment with government partners and non-government partners sharing information mm. all towards keeping people safe is, is, a, is again, um, a very satisfying role and one that, I, one that I love. So that's why I can get around the station with a smile on my face every day. Wow, and I'm sure, you know, um, with what you have achieved, this is where you can always keep your cool, level-headed, and uh, a happy family, and that's why you're always smiling. Yes. I do my best yes. every day. <laughs> I, I, I believe so. That's all the time we have for today. I'm sure all of us, including myself, have find, found uh, Detective Inspector Brett Betty's um, information and messages for us on how to actually have a happy family. So tune in the next time and I'll see you again. Thank you for watching Cop Chat.